the Bible says that it's, it's springtime. And, and springtime for powers was a time of war, a time when countries that had authority would get together and go out and try and expand upon their territory. Springtime meant that it was time for those who were conquerors to mount up and try and advance and get more than what they already had. And if you ever want evidence of how powerful David's makeover was, or how much power David had, all you have to do is look in verse 1 of this text and the beginning of verse number 2. You see, at a time when most kings would go out with their armies, at a time when most kings would be on the front line and dealing with the battle, at a time when most kings would be out there telling folk to go left and go right because they were worried if they lost that their throne would be overtaken. The Bible says at the end of verse 1 that David was back at the crib. The Bible says at the beginning in verse number 2 that when evening time came that David was laying in the bed and he was chilling. David was not worried about being defeated. David was not worried about losing because God had to David favor. Yes, yes, yes. David in his makeover season gets up one evening and when he gets up, he looks over the, the country and it's good to be king because when you're the king, you got the best view of everything. And he can look to his left and look at all the territory and look to his right and see how much God has blessed him again. Look behind him and be able to have a great view. But on this day when David took a look, David saw something that showed up called his eye. Yes, yes, when David looked out this day, he looked out and he saw Bathsheba. Yes, he did. He saw Bathsheba. And I gotta I got, I got teach this thing. I, I, I gotta I got teach. He saw Bathsheba. Yes, he did. He saw Bathsheba. And if you want to know how bad Bathsheba was, Mike, I gotta make them understand. Bathsheba was, Bathsheba was so bad that she would make you say, Beyonce, who?
Listen, go get me, you're right. And I want you to bring him here. Because David is thinking that she's pregnant. And if I bring Uriah here, as fine as his wife is, there's no way he's not going to go home and try and see his wife. But Uriah loves David so much that when he gives him liberty, instead of going home to be with his wife, Uriah sleeps outside the door of David because he wants to make sure that David is going to be all right. Look at somebody that's a low down dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm getting close to somebody right now. I see some folks that's looking like, can I leave right now? Stay! 
got three things, maybe four, that you need to do if you are serious about not messing up your makeover. The first thing that you need to do if you are serious about not messing up your makeover is know that it's okay to talk to yourself right now and tell yourself you don't want to go there. Oh, y'all just missed that. It's okay to tell yourself you don't say self. You don't want to go there. This word in verses 2 through 4 is a sermon all by itself. It would be a great sermon for, for leadership. For every minister and pastors and deacons and ushers and, and everyone else. Because in leadership, you have a chance or an opportunity to see some things or hear some things that you would not normally be privy to. But I guarantee you that if that is one part of David's life that he could play back. If there is one part of David's life that he could push the pause button on and then say to himself, you don't want to go there, it's verses 2, verses 3, and verses 4. Oh, look at the word David in verse 2. It's bad enough that he takes advantage of his view. That's what he does because he can see some things. He, he looks out and he sees Bathsheba. But just like he sent a messenger to have Bathsheba to come and sleep with him, David could have also sent the messenger to Bathsheba's house and told that girl to put some clothes on. Yes, he could have. Yes, he could have. Yes, he could have. And it's bad enough. And, and then, oh, somebody, y'all don't feel me right now. Ha, ha, ha. The, the, the moment that you saw that that business was not your business and private business, you should have butted out of that business. The moment that you saw that that marriage had issues, you should have made it your business to not take advantage of the situation, but to be a blessing to the complications that the marriage was dealing with. Oh, I gotta get back to my text. I, I gotta get back. Y'all don't want me to go there this morning. Y'all don't want me to go there this morning. It's bad enough that what he does with Edom, see, Edom and Uriah were both a part of David's royal army. That means they were like his armor bearers. They were charged with guarding David's life. They were charged with making sure that no harm ever came to the king. And it's bad enough that he sits with Uriah and eats with Uriah and does all these things with Uriah. But one of the most low down things that I've ever seen anybody do is right there in verse 14. When David makes up his mind that he's going to kill Uriah, David had writes a letter to Joab and then he gives the letter to Uriah. Blessings in store for you that the world can't 
don't go there. But Reverend Mike, is it okay if I go there through the word right now? The Bible says, let me tell you why you don't want to go there. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, I believe it's verse 33, that the Lord curses the house of the wicked, but that he blesses the house of the righteous. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, verse 7, that let the evil, let the, let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil man his thoughts. And then if you turn to God, that he will have mercy upon you. And if you go to God, that he will freely pardon you. That means that if you don't go there, God has got some free will blessings for you. God has got some pardons for you. If you don't go there, God is about to change this thing and fix this thing. If you don't go there, God is about to make an example out of you to show everybody else that when you trust in me, when you lean on me, when you look to me, when you depend upon me, when you give me everything you got, you ain't got to make a stupid move because when God tells you not to go there, when God gives you a makeover, it's because God has got something bigger, something better, something bolder, something mind blowing prepared for you that can't nobody get but you. Say yeah. Look at your name and say, you don't want to go there. <laughs> and the second thing you got to do, if you were serious about not messing up your makeover today, is that you got to make a choice. Look at somebody and point your finger and say, you got to make a choice. If you believe that, I dare to take about a seven second praise break right now. If you look at this word and you look at Bathsheba and Joab, many people have penciled in Bathsheba as a hoe and a homewrecker and an opportunist. If you look at this word the way the enemy wants you to look at it, you will see that or think of Joab as a person who is a David crony and a David flunky and that he would do anything to, for David and that he lied for David to make David's plot become legit. But their flaw was not being low down. Their flaw was that they did not have enough faith in God to make a choice about what it is that would glorify God when it was time to make a decision. I think I just said something. You see, you see, Bathsheba Bathsheba, can I go there for a minute? If you look at the Bible in verse 27, it doesn't say the Lord was displeased with David, Bathsheba, and Joab. The Bible says in verse 27 that what David did displeased the Lord. Bathsheba and Joab made the choices that they made not because she wanted to sleep with David, as a lot of preachers have wrongfully preached all of my life. That's not why she slept with David. She slept with David because there was a rule that said that if you did not do what the king said do. Look at somebody and say, be careful about who you make your king. Oh, that's one for you right there. Be careful about who you make your king. There was a rule that said, unless you do what the king says do, that you can be put to death. And because her faith was not in place, and because Joab's faith was not in place, they were more afraid of dying at the hand of David than they were about displeasing God. Oh, I think I just said something this morning. Uh, when you are so consumed with the wrong kind of people, and you got the wrong kind of in charge of your life, they will make you make some decisions and make you make some choices that go against what you know you should not do. But you are called in a tough situation to have the kind of faith that Shadrach and Meshach and a bad Negro have because they got put in the same situation with the king. Because the king said, Unless you serve me, I'm gonna put you to death. And they told the king, We'll go into the furnace and we'll die because the God that we serve is able. Isn't that what Daniel did last week when the king said, When I preach the Bible, that I will have you go into the lion's den? Daniel walked in that lion's den and didn't worry about a daggone thing. And didn't God shut the mouth of the lions? Somebody here today, you need to make a choice today. You're going to 
trust in God that it ain't so bad in the heat of a situation. That it ain't so bad being in a lion's den of some situation. Because if you had never been in a furnace or if you had never been in a lion's den, you couldn't have walked out and told everybody what the Lord has done for you. If there's somebody here, you know that when you chose God, didn't he make the way out of nowhere? When you chose God, didn't he rescue you and your family? When you chose God, didn't he save you from that addiction? When you chose God, didn't he resuscitate your mind? When you chose God, didn't he give you a testimony that spoke to your text? And you can tell anybody, I choose to serve the Lord as for me and my heart. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him. Make a choice. Say yes. Yeah. You got to make a choice. You got to tell God today, I choose you over everything. I choose you no matter how bad it gets. I choose you. I don't care how broke I am. I choose you. Maybe I don't have enough money to buy presents. Maybe I don't have enough gas money to get back home. Maybe I don't have enough faith like I see some other folk have. But I choose to be on the right side of God. I choose to stay near your feet. I choose to bow my life down before you because I know the same thing you did in my past, you got better for me in my future. I know you can make a way out of no way. I know you can wipe my tears stained out. I know you can save me and fix me and reclaim me and restore me and rename me. I know, so I choose it. Oh, high five of my five, don't you? I choose God. I choose God. I choose God. I choose God. Your high five is changing somebody else's attitude. How about the folks are just looking at you like you?